Namaste. Namaste to all. Prostrating at the lotus feet of Brahmanishta, Shrotriya Sadguru, Swami Virajeshwara Saraswati, on behalf of all of us and to the entire Guru Parampara. Today's discourse on Viveka Shudavani will continue. Last time, we had stopped at the shloka number 325. These sets of shlokas, Acharya, Shankara, Bhagavatpada, dealing with is mainly the issue of Pramada. And you will continue the same point. So before that, Mangala Charana shloka. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Mahasarasvatya Namaha Sadashiva Samarambham Sri Shankarachar Yamadhyamam Masmadashari Pariyantam Vande Guru Paramparam Shruti Smruti Purana Namalayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Param Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashakrata Vande Bhagavanta Upuna Puna Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tamagocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sadgurum Pranados Miham Vam Nama Bhagavate Virajitaraya Hari Om. So in the, these sets of shlokas, Acharya is continuously, repeatedly, is telling about the, how the Pramada, Pramada will lead to totally forgetting our own basic reality and then putting us into this web of maya called samsara. So we become completely involved in the samsara. Our whole life, because of the concept of the ahankara, me, myself, and mine, mamakara, we are involved outside. Outwardly our life goes on. Inwardly, we become totally disconnected with our own real reality. Our reality is we are Atma Swarupa, Asanga. Totally non-associated all the time. Kevala, alone. Ekam eva adviti. Brahma Padarta, Brahma Varsha. I am that Atma Swarupa. So that, when, because of Smuti Vibrahma, Slips out. So that is called Pramada. Pramada is negligence, inadvertence, forgetting our real reality, forgetting really who I am, associating with people, associating with Vishayas, associating with the sense objects, associating with our mental thoughts. The whole life process continues. That is because of Pramada. In the next set of a few sets of jokes, same thing Acharya is dealing with and telling his disciple Mumukshu, an advanced Uttam Adhikari who is really qualified to know the Brahma or Brahma word. So last time Acharya stopped at the same point, logically taking one after another how Pramada leads to so many problems one after another, how we get deluded. Vishayeshu avishcetaha sankalpayati tadgunan samyak sankalpanat kamaha kamat kumsaha pravatsanam. So that was the last shloka covered. Here, Acharya is very clear. When the mind enters into the outward life, about our desires emanating, our desires emanating, and all the time thinking about our own desires to possess this or that, what happens? The desires will further solidify, they further fructify, become so strong, and those desires lead us to do all the necessary karma, connected with the fulfill of, fulfillment of my desires. Same thing in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna Paramatma, in the second famous 
most important chapter, Sankhya Yoga, the second chapter. He deals the same thing 5,000 years before what the Lord has said. Jayato vishayan kumsaha sangaste shtupa jayate sangat sanjayate kamaha kamat prodho vijayate. Jayato vishayan kumsaha sangaste shtupa jayate sangat sanjayate kamaha kamat prodho vijayate. Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna. Making Arjuna as the Nimitta, he is telling the entire mankind. So what he says there? Association with the sense objects or the desired objects. Association with the Vishaya. Creates the attachment. And when the attachment becomes stronger and stronger in the mind, it becomes the desire to possess. When the desire is generated, if the desires are not fulfilled according to our will and wish, then due to that restlessness, anger, rodha, anger, wrath, develops in them. And the mind becomes more angry, wrathful, vengeful, because I am not getting what I really wanted. So that is what the Lord says. And he continues the next sloka there itself in Bhagavad Gita. So association with the sense objects breeds the desire, attachment. Sangha, attachment. Attachment results in desires. And the desire generates the anger when we don't get our desires fulfilled. Then he says next, in Bhagavad Gita, what he says? Prodhat bhavati sammohaha sammohat smriti vibhramaha smriti bhramshat buddhinasho buddhinashat pranashyati The very next shloka there in Bhagavad Gita. When the anger erupts in my mind because I am not getting what I wanted in my mind. So much I had so many desires one after another, I am not getting them fulfilled in my mind. So that anger develops and that anger you know, it creates a sort of confusion in the mind. My thinking reasoning faculty, brain power it results in confusion and the confusion because of the anger it clouds my real thinking apparatus out of the memory. It clouds my memory. I'm not able to think properly. And it, it also clouds or covers our intellect. And the intellect goes away. I'm really confused because I'm angry. I'm not getting things what I wanted. So in that confusion, there is a loss of real intelligence or reasoning power. I lose my balance of the mind. Then, ultimately, I will perish. That is what the Lord says. Smruti bhramshat buddhinashaha buddhinashat pranashyati So, when the buddhinasha occurs, the man's downfall takes. Pranashyati. He is destroyed. Metaphorically, destroyed means he will never go up with the ladder of spirituality. Bhagavanta Bhagavad Gita ili hedidane ili achari ru viveka chudamani ili hedupai. Mundina shloka the lead, Varasta Spashta Vagavata. That is Swarupa Vibramsho Vibrashtas to Patatyadaha Patitasya Vinarasham Punar Naroha Ikyate. Ankalpam varjayet tasmat sarva nartasya karanam. The next sloka, Acharya here says, almost similar to Bhagavad Gita sermon by the Lord Krishna Paramahansa. 
ततस्वूपिभ्रंशो विभ्रष्टस्तु पतत्यध पति विनाशं पुनर्नारोह ईक्षते संकल्प वर्जयेतस्मात्थस्य कारण तथा स्वूपिभ्रंश विभ्रष्टस्तु पतति अदह Look, my dear disciple. So, what happens when the mind gets deflected? When, because of pramada, negligence, swarupa vibhramsha occurs, then that vibrastha, the person who has forgotten his own reality due to pramada, negligence, inadvertence. Patati adaha, he falls down. He totally falls down. Patitasya vinana sham punar naro ha ikshate. Once he falls down, he will never come up again. Acharya is telling it. So metaphorically, metaphorically and spiritually, this means in the path of. A realization, a mumukshu should be careful. If you forget your swarupa, your reality during your sadhana, spiritual sadhana, you go down spiritually. You will never come up spiritually, and you will never realize your real nature, true potential. You will never be liberated because. spiritually you are going down because your mind is totally outward thinking that is due to negligence all the time acharya is hinting the point the negligence of not remembering who really i am the negligence of forgetting my own reality what is the reality i am not the anatma vastu anymore i am not the body anymore i am not the mind anymore i am not chitta i am not even the buddhi i am not any of these perishable things the whole world the whole universe the prapancha is ultimately perishable but my body is also perishable so i am totally dissociated i am asanga not associated with the body anymore i am imperishable truth i am that sublime truth i am that ultimate truth i am that cosmic truth i am that brahma vastu i am that atma swarupa i am no more attached <laughs> to the world to worldly senses or the, the, the sensual things or the objects of the world the world itself is a illusion <laughs> in this illusory world which is perishable which is transitory which is there today it will go tomorrow my body is living today it will die tomorrow all my kids and kins my association my so called mine concept my own people my own family my own money my own possession my own will everything will perish once i die once the body falls in where is the question of me and my everything goes away so this constant remembering constant and always you know steadfastly remembering that the reality when it when it doesn't happen we slip off that's called pramad that is the neglect so acharyaru yen helta iddare pramadad bagge helta iddare ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ವಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ನಾನು ಯಾರು ಅಂತ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗದೆ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಜಗತ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಪರಮುಖವಾಗಿ ನಾನು ದೇಹ ಅನ್ನೋ ಭಾವದಿಂದ ಮಮಕಾರ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ಜೀವನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಏನಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಚ್ಯುತಿಯ ಸ್ವರೂಪದಿಂದ ನಾವು ಜಾರಿ ಕೆಳಗೆ ಬೀಳ್ತೇವೆ ಜಾರಿ ಕೆಳಗೆ ಬಿದ್ರೆ ನಾಶವಾಗ್ತೇವೆ ಅಥವಾ ನಾಶವಾಗ್ತೇವೆ ಹೊರತು ಅದರಿಂದ ಮೇಲೆ ಪುನರುತ್ಥಾನ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ರೋಷಣೆಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅನರ್ಥಗಳಿಗೆ ಆಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಅನರ್ಥಗಳಿಗೆ ಕಾರಣವಾದಂತಹ ಪರಮ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥವಾದ 
ಮೋಕ್ಷೇಚ್ಛೆಯನ್ನು ಉಳ್ಳಂತಹ ನೀನು ಪ್ರಿಯ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ಎಲ್ಲ ರೀತಿ ಅನರ್ಥಗಳಿಗೆ ಕಾರಣವಾದಂತಹ ಈ ಸಂಸಾರ ಬಂಧನಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾರಣವಾದಂತಹ ಈ ವಿಷಯ ಚಿಂತನೆಯನ್ನು ಬಿಡು ವಿಷಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ವಿಷಯಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡೋದನ್ನ ಬಿಡು ಬಯಕೆಗಳ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಚಿಂತನೆ ಮಾಡೋದನ್ನ ಬಿಡು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಸೊ ಇದು ಥರ್ಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಜ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪಂ ವರ್ಜಯೇತ್ ತಸ್ಮಾತ್ ಸರ್ವ ಅನರ್ಥಸ್ಯ ಕಾರಣ ಲುಕ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಸರ್ವ ಅನರ್ಥಸ್ಯ ಕಾರಣ ಸಂಕಲ್ಪಂ ವರ್ಜಯೇತ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿಸೈ the feeling how my objects possessive feelings all that comes under sankal vishaya sankal vishaya sukha sankal so sarva anarthasya karanam sankalpam varjaye so acharya is very clear asma that means therefore there is a injunction in the line in this flow in the third asma acharya that is a sort of a caution so my dear disciple be aware you be aware of your reality all the thoughts and sankalpas are the root cause for your downfall in this samsara and they will bind you in this samsara or the world you cannot escape so that you are dying and rebirth death and rebirth it will continue for eons and eons together so the bondage will increase permanently as long as you forget your own reality as long as you start thinking about vishaya sukha and the objects possessive in your mind to possess whatever you want so the desires the ultimately desires they will bind you and bind you and bind you fully to the samsara he continues matte munde heltare sir ata pramadatna parosti mrutyur vivekino brahma vidha samadho samahita siddhi mupaiti samyak samahita atma bhava savadhana ಅತ ಪ್ರಮಾದಿ ಮೃತ್ಯು ವಿವೇಕಿ ನೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ ಸಮಾಧೌ ಸಮಿತ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಮುಪೈತಿ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ಸಮಾಹಿತಾವಧಾನ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಏನ್ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ ವಿವೇಕಿಯಾದವನಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಾಜ್ಞನಾದವನಿಗೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನದ ಸಮೀಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದು ಸಾಧನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಈ ಪ್ರಮಾದ ಅನ್ನೋದಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಬೇರೆ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಬೇರೆ ಯಾವುದೂ ಇಲ್ಲವೇ ಇಲ್ಲಪ್ಪ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಸರಿಯಾದ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋದರೆ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಉಂಟಾದರೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲೂ ನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪ ಸಮಾಧಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ಕಾರದ ಅನುಭವ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ನೀನು ಎಚ್ಚರಿಕೆಯಿಂದ ಎಚ್ಚರಿಕೆಯಿಂದ ಸಮಾಹಿತಾತ್ಮ ಭವ ಸಮಾಹಿತನಾಗ ಸಮಾಧಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಮಾಹಿತನಾಗು ಅಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅಪ್ಪಣೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಹಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಅತ ಪ್ರಮಾದ ನ ಪರೋಸ್ತಿ ಮೃತ್ಯು ವಿವೇಕಿನೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿದ ಸಮಾಧೌ ವಿವೇಕಿನ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಿದ ಸಮಾಧೌ ಪ್ರಮಾದಾತ್ ಪರ ನ ಮೃತ್ಯು ಅಸ್ತಿ it's like that so for a viveki for a learned one for a jnani acharya says for a brahmavida for a jnani for a viveki during his deep contemplation one pointed contemplation that is in the samadhi state when he is in deep contemplation when he is in the deep concentration dwelling on atma swarupa dwelling on parabrahma vastu 
there is no greater danger than the pramada which, which itself is nothing but a death a death warrant so there is no other death for a jnani other than pramada who is in deep samadhi contemplate so the distraction itself is just like a death so he says acharya the disciple that is why samahita siddhim upait samyak samahitatma bhavasavadhan so look my dear disciple so only with the proper deeper and deeper concentration in the samadhi sthiti in the ultimate nirvikalpa samadhi sthiti one attains liberation one attains salvation he becomes aware first hand about this true nature by the grace of atma itself by the grace of god himself ishvara himself so he will realize the self his true nature true potentiality only in the deep per nirvikalpa samadhi so samahitatma bhava savadhana that is why my dear disciple remember this and be always be always carefully remain well in that samadhi state always well in that remain in samadhi state till the jnana dawns perfectly not fleeting so here acharya is using the word samadhi and samadhi here as per the bhashya we investigate the bhakti maswami gal the word samadhi here means nirvikalpa samadhi that is totally concentration deeper concentration without individual sense of individual sense so it is total deep concentration at all in the during the meditative state so that swami gal calls it as here nirvikalpa samadhi samadhi prakarana in viveka chudamani again acharya deals in detail later in the later shloka and here for a jnani like me it becomes very difficult to explain what exactly samadhi means what exactly samadhi means what exactly here nirvikalpa samadhi means as sri sri chandrashekar bharti mahas swami gul writes the bhashya for the shloka the samikalpa and nirvikalpa samadhi these two words are used in vedanta very 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 in the clear cut terms very clear in samikalpa samadhi it is said that at the subtlest level subtlest level at the sukshma the sukshma level mentally during the state of samadhi deeper concentration the awareness of the presence of i is still persisting so in the subtle level sukshma the sukshma level the duality is still persisting there is a drushta and there is a drushya there is this seer and there is a object seen the seer is aware of himself and he is also aware of the dhyana vastu the scene the object so still the duality is persisting he is sensing that he is aware of himself and he is perceiving the object of his the vastu on which he is contemplating so that is samikalpa or it is also called samprajnata samadhi i don't know since my vocabulary absolutely is not up to the mark 
I am, and also I am unable to convey all the feelings and the, the definitions here at the higher level. I am trying to just blurt out in my own fashion a little bit tidbits here. If I am wrong, you have to pardon me. Please correct me if I go wrong in explaining all these things. Because Samadhi state cannot be really explained. It has to be experienced. What is Samadhi? It cannot be explained by words. A person who has not entered into Samadhi by the grace of Lord, by the grace of Ishvara or Sadguru, now he may not understand when the opposite person tells him about the Samadhi. What is the Samadhi? So what is the difference between Savikalpa Samadhi and Nirvikalpa Samadhi? It's not possible. And for a person like me, Ajnani, a dust particle, it is still difficult to explain all this completely to the satisfaction of the viewer or to the listener. You have to pardon me on that. Here, Sri Chandrasekhar Bharati Maaswami in his Bhashya, he is using the word reverse as to Nirvikal. So, Atma Darshana happens only in the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. The reality dawns, the reality of our, my nature dawns only in the Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Not in the Savikalpa Samadhi. Nirvikalpa Samadhi is also called as Nirbija Samadhi. So all these Vedantic words are there. The more these words are used, more the people who are in the initial sadhana mode will get confused and confused. All that strikes here in the mind is a very tangible but not completely suitable and superficial analogy I can give, which may not be completely correct. It won't do justice at all. But just for the sake of clarification, an analogy can be given to try to, uh, try to explain what is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. There the duality is totally lost. The seer and the seen, that distinction is totally lost. It is, disappears. Drushya and Drushta, they merge with one another. The seer and the seen, they merge with one another. So the duality is totally lost. The difference is totally vanished. So this can be compared to our day-to-day -day experience. What is Nirvikalpa Samadhi? It can be compared, sort of an analogy, to our deep sleep state, daily what we experience. Deep sleep. Nirvikalpa Samadhi and the Yenun Tehiro Tumbaka. समाधिगे समानी Nimige, new yar on the gotidia, Nim Heser gotidia, Nima on the Vekit Vayeno, Nima on the Oyasu, Nima Gando, Henno, Yao do a little new model of the Kelsa, Nima Samsaro, Tapa Trego, Nora and the Chintego, Yao do a little, Alinano was to nail, Niva Lin, Adanidil Illirpiri, Illuil, Yenuilla, Yenuilla. Yava was to illa, Vivation illa, Chinta illa, Sakra. Nano no bhava villa. Nano no bhava ill de la Hankar villa. Aga, Nanoro no bhava no villa, Mamakar will. Pundutara niralavada, Niramadavada, Ananda Maya, Nijava the Ananda Maya city, Ali Yenu illa, other yellow with it. Ramahan and the Tumberta Kanta has to be. So deep sleep. 
there is total identity loss is it not every day we in the deep sleep you don't remember who you are you don't know your status you don't remember your body your mind your brain your chitta and also you don't remember your kids and pins your association dissociation your good and bad feelings your raga and dvesha where you are working what is your bank balance what is your status whether you are a man or a woman you don't even bother about your kids and pins your parents nobody is you are not bothered there is nobody in the deep sleep there is nobody totally there is a total identity loss your ego is quote, totally lost there is no awareness that you are existing you don't you don't think you don't be aware you, you are not aware that you are in deep sleep you are totally lost all your problems are lost. so there is nothing like happiness nothing like suffering nothing like grief so it is beyond a beautiful state where there is total stillness it is sort of a bliss brahmananda it is a sort of a bliss is it not every one of you please think try to recollect every day when you are in deep sleep what is the state of mind where are you where are your problems where are your sufferings where are your umpteen number of desires unfulfilled desires if you think for a second where are you in deep sleep where is your identity where is your wife where is your kid where is your family where is your parent father and mother your colleagues about your problems not not a single one totally you are unaware of everything but you are you are aware deeply subconsciously you are aware in the sense not about your identity but you are full of awareness there is a total bliss so that full of awareness or total bliss is nothing but brahmananda so it is a fleeting brahmananda nijananda state it is beyond happiness happiness is only transitory it is beyond higher than that. so that brahmananda jananda state what we experience so the deep sleep there is nothing but there is everything so that can be compared to nirvikalpa state so while in the waking state during dhyana during meditation if i could enter into that type of nirvikal samadhi by the grace of ishvara by the grace of lord by the grace of sadguru then all these things become very clear the reality dawns itself identity is lost reality dawns then you escape from the cycle of birth so that is what आचार्य सेसियर समाहितः सिद्धिम उपायते सम्यक् समाहितात्मा भव सावधान सो बी केयरफुल बी एंगेज्ड एंड ट्राई टू बी इन द डीपर निर्विकल्प समाधि स्थिति मोड ऑल द टाइम ड्यूरिंग योर साधन बिकॉज दैट इज नथिंग बट दैट लीड्स टू अटेनमेंट ऑफ ज्ञान दैट लीड्स टू लिबरेशन that leads to kaivalya then you know that you are one and there is no second you are the only one present there is no second ekam eva advitiyam that feeling sets in automatically it is not a jnana is not coming from outside you you yourself become jnana swarupa that is what vedanta also call calls it you know, attaining kaivalya moksh salvation so next same thing acharya continues jivato yasya kaivalyam videhe sacha kevalah yat kinchat pashyato bhedam bhayam brote yajushutihi jivato yas कैवल्यम विदेहे सच केवल यत्किंचत् 
पश्यतो भेदम भयम ब्रूते यजुश्रुति ही नमाचार्य स्टेस यर बदिकिरु आगले शरीर इरु आगले यारी के ये समाधि स्थिति इन्द्र कई वल्ले ज्ञान प्राप्ति आगे दियो देहानंतर दली देह मरणा फंदी द नंतर है देह पात बाद नंतर हो आत ने के कई वल्ले प्राप्ति आत केवल नागी इरुता ने इन्द्र कई वल्ले प्राप्ति आगुत करे आदरें ना ये जगत में ले सुल्प सूक्ष्माते सूक्ष्म सुल्प भेदवन्नो नोड़ इधर हो सा यार भेदवन्न नोड़ता नो नान बेरे इन्नो बुर बेरे नान बेरे ये वस्तु बेरे अदु बेरे इधु बेरे अनो भेद भाव इधु यार अनुभव के बर्ता ये दियो अंधवरी के यवत्त दुरु भया इरुत्त दे इधु शुद्धि प्रमा तैत्तरीय उपनिषद के ना उदाहरणे को जीवतो यस्य कायवल्यम विदे हे सच केवला हाँ तक मीन्स इल्ली अर्थ ये नोंद्रे बुद्धिकीरु आगा यारो जीवन मुक्ति ये न होंदता नो यारो मुक्ति ये न पढ़ीता नो तरना स्वरूप स्थिति अर्थ कोड़ो दो मुक्ति ये तर तरना निजरूप वन यार अर्थ कोण दो आता कायवल्या पदवी ये न पढ़ दहागे आता मरणा अंतरो सह केवलम केवला हा मीन्स विदेह मुक्ति उन्दुत्ता ने इले भेदवन नोडो उनके यवत्तिकर भया इधु शुद्धि प्रमाण का आचरण ना सो व्हाट ही सेस हेयर इन दिस शोक हु द वन हु रिमेंस लिबरेटेड वंस हु डांस in 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 the person in whom the jnana dawns in once he be once he becomes a brahma with a knower of brahma once he understands his reality he reaches kaivalya while still living he becomes kaivalya he reaches kaivalya means moksha he attains salvation liberation while living itself so Liberated while living itself is called Jivan Mukti, as per Acharya's definition. And Acharya says, even after the death of the body, he remains in the same Kaivalya Pada. Means, Kevalaha means Kaivalya, means alone. Alone means what? He remains a Jnani, that is Videha Mukti. While living, he is referred as a Jivan Mukta. After the death of the body, he is referred as Videha Mukta, a jnani, a knower of the truth, a Brahma jnani. Whereas the others, normal ajnani, Acharya tells in the second line, yet kinchit pasyato bedham bhayam brote yajushruti. The Yajurveda, Shruti means Upanishad of Yajurveda, that the Taitariya Upanishad says, Acharya, giving the on the contrary, if you see the duality, even minutest level, then it leads to fear. The fear of everything. The fear of losing. The fear of not possessing. The fear of things happening against your will and wish. Normally to every one of us, the fear is there. The fear is there from the birth to death. What is that, what is that fear? Of so many times. So many times, not getting things as you desire, thinking that, oh, whether things happen according to my will and wish or not, fear. Whether people like me or not, fear. Whether things happen very smoothly, whether it without any crisis, all the doubts, doubts, doubts lead to fear. Fear complex, the mind, what is going to happen tomorrow? What people will tell, what people will think of me, everything is generated out of fear. Fear of life, because you are in samsara, you are ajnani, you are not destined to be, you know, in the sadhana mode. You are in the worldly sense, you are in the worldly life. So always the fear is at the back of our mind in all our actions. 
what people say that is one aspect of the feel all our actions are guided normally by these points in life what people think of me my status what people say about me at my back these things always guide us that is a fear and above uh, all the fear of in the future losing my wealth the fear of losing my property the fear of my own people deserting me the fear of my wife or husband deserting me not treating me well the fear of my own children deserting me not treating me well left to myself uh, they may leave me on the road they may ditch me they may take away all my property they may deceive me my friends may deceive me my colleagues may deceive me and ultimately above all the fear of death our gurudev used to always say above all ultimately built in the greatest fear complex in the human mind from birth to death is the fear of death that is the greatest fear mahabhaya greatest fear fear of death i am going to die one day i want to live i want to live knowingly well knowingly well knowingly well that everybody has to die today i do so seeing our own elders dying in our family but still the question of death sets in into our mind i fear to i refuse you know the fear catches up on you i don't want to die i don't want to die so the fear of death is so great so great so gripping in its clutches like a octopus it will never allow your mind to go hither and there it is always there as especially please mark my word especially when you reach 60 plus of the age and by god as grace 70 plus of the age or 80 plus of the age or still 90 plus of the age what happens you will experience you will, the different gradations the different levels of the death fear how sets in how sets in, in the mind and at the back of the mind is always there 24 bar 7 lingering lingering and lingering and you know your whole psyche is completely controlled by the fear of death people suffer in their mind especially in the last days especially on the death bed because they are normal people they are not spiritually endowed people they are not graced by the guru or god so however intelligent however lofty positions they had in the life wealthy people super wealthy people very rich people in their life the fear of death will catch absolute so that what shuti says taitreya upanishad says all this is because i am living in the duality i am different you are different so the duality sets in the fear so the taitri upanishad says yada kaivesh etasmin udaram antaram kurute ata tasya bhayam bhavati taitri upanishad says yada kaivesh etasmin udaram antaram kurute ata tasya bhayam bhavati that means even if you find a minutest difference of duality that i am different he is different this is different that is different i am separate he is separate entity like that even a minutest difference is felt felt then it generates fear without remembering the whole thing is manifestation of parabrahma vastu without developing sarvatma bhava without losing the sharira bhava the minute difference when you sense in the life it leads to fear that is what the upanishad says so acharya is thinking that in the second line of 
यत्किंचित् पश्यतो भेदं भयं ब्रूते यजुष्टुटि ही तो नेक्स्ट श्लोक का फिर मेक इट क्लियर यदा कदा वापि विपश्चिदेश ब्रह्मण्यंते अपि अनुमात्र भेदं पश्यत तथा अमुष्य भयं तदैवा यद्वीक्षितं भिन्नतया प्रमादात यदा कदा वापि विपश्चिदेश ब्रह्मण्यनंते अपि अनुमात्र भेदं ब्रह्मणि अनंते अपि अनुमात प्रभेदम् सेकंड लाइन सेकंड लाइन पश्चत् यथा मुश्य भयम् तदेवा यद्वीक्षितम् भिन्नतया प्रमादात् आचार्यों मत्त सूक्ष्म दले हेल्पता इत्ता ये नहेल्पता इधरे श्लोक दले इंद्रे आदरिंदा यावागले आगले याव समय दले आगले ज्ञानी आदवनो अथवा ज्ञान निष्ठे उल्लावनो विद्वांसन आदवनो राज्यन आदवनो ये अनंतवाद एकवाद ब्रह्मवस्तु इनले सोल्प भेदवन्न नोडिदरु सहा आ तप्पि निंदा प्रमाद दिंदा आ भेदवन्न कांटायर तक्कन तवन गे भयवन्न उन्तु मारु तदे भेद दर्शकी उल्लावन गे सदा भया यरुत तदे इंता अर्थ आचार्य हेल्प ये तो दुष्ट पेंद्रे तो ये संसारा जीवी गलो नानो इन्नो ब्रो ये लवो बेरे बेरे अन्नवा द्वैत भावा ये तो दुष्ट पेंद्रे द्वैत भाव इधर लवो सत्या अन्नो भावने ली ये तो सत्या ये तो सत्या नोट तायरो दला सत्या ये दृश्य जगत तो सत्या ना भावने इत्ता का बेदा भावा बन बेदा भावा इधर ली � in any given time, yada kada vapi vipaschit eshaha. Eshaha vipaschit yada kada vapi. In any given time, at any time, a wise man, vipaschit, a wise man, a learned man, a prajna, a tattvadarshi, samavetka, buddha, all these Vedantic words, denoting the wise man, the learned man, jnani. Such a learned one, if he sees even a minutest difference, duality, even if he sees a minutest difference, subtle difference, that I am different, that is different. That means, totally, totally thinking that the whole world is real, objects are real, their existence is eternal. So, when the whole thing is real, what happens? I am different, he is different. So like that, if a jnani sees the minutest difference and that by itself that results in pramada, negligence, slipping down from the reality, the whole thing is brahmam, brahmam. So, sarvam khalvidam brahma, that is gone in the mind. The whole thing is manifestation, avivakti of brahma, that is gone. So when you slip from that, that results in negligence, pramada. So that pramata itself becomes source of fear. Same thing Acharya is repeating. Repeat. Repeating. So once even a learned man, a jnani, a shastraveta, a prajna, a scholar, a vidvamsa, who is in the mode of sadhana, who is in the spiritual mode of sadhana, a true seeker who is trying to seek the reality, even such a seeker, such a spiritual aspirant, look, my dear disciple, even such a seeker, if he sees the difference, if he sees the duality, I am different, he is different, me and he and this and that concept, if it develops in the mind about Parabrahma Vastu, if he starts believing that the whole world is real, the diverse objects and Inanimated, animate things are real. They are all different like that. If we start seeing the duality, if we actually, in other words, his perception is that duality exists. If he thinks like that, by carelessness, by negligence, that leads to fear. 
पश्यत यथा मुष्य भयम तदैव यद दीक्षितम भिन्नतया प्रमादा सो दैट लीड्स टू फियर फियर सो हियर इज मेकिंग द पॉइंट वेरी क्लियर फॉर अ भेददर्शी फॉर अ पर्सन हु सीज अ ड्यूअलिटी इन द वर्ल्ड फियर इज ऑलवेज देयर एट द बैक ऑफ द माइंड नो बडी इज डिवॉइड ऑफ फियर fear complex only a real jnani he realized the master he is totally out of fear there is no fear concept for all ajnanis the fear is the bane fear of everything so that is why acharya is putting this point very vehemently repeated how the pramada negligence leads to fear in bhudharanika upanishad same thing another shruti vachan bhudharanika upanishad also says a beautiful mantra is there dvitiyatvai bhayam bhavati very simple anuvakta dvitiyatvai bhayam bhavati what does that mean dvitiya the very perception of the second existence other than me the very feeling that there is something other than me existing the second the moment you think there is one more duality more than one existing that leads to fear dvitiyatvai bhayam bhavati leads to fear this is rudharanik upanishad so acharya is making the point pramada pramada negligence swarupa vismruti pramada means slipping from my reality all these things please remember acharya is telling the highest mumukshu qualified disciple uttam adhikari about the highest truth of reaching the reality the highest truth the path he is showing to the mumukshu or to such an aspirant how he should conduct himself how he should be careful to avoid the negligence pramada because pramada is a dangerous obstacle in realization of the true nature all these things sound very sometimes very confusing for people at our level who are not even qualified mumukshus or disciples but viveka chudamani stands like a beacon a jewel glittering in the field of spirituality with all the considerate compassion and karunya and mercy acharya is giving out these highest levels of truth in a different 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 step by step by levels in different shlokas so that at least if i make a sincere attempt if i really become serious to sit down and take and understand the shlokas one by one in the whole entirety this will definitely help us this will definitely help us the god's grace god's grace will flow inside the heart and the god will show the way the sadguru will show the way this is what my gurudeva used to tell me first time first time when he called me and said you start doing the giving discourse on vivek chuda very early in the by end of 2012 he initiated me into this for nearly one year it went on i was apprehending how a, a jnani like me can even think of let alone reading giving a discourse on what vivek should have done acharya shankar bhagavat gurudev said i know you can do it so i took it as only adesha guru so by experiences personal experiences only when you are deeply involved in vedanta or in the spiritual study or in actual process of meditation all these things will fall flat by the grace of sadguru by the grace of lord by the grace of ishwar so today with the guru sankalpa we stop here uh, we are i am stopping i think here <laughs> 
ಶ್ಲೋಕ ನಂಬರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜವ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಜಯ ಜಯ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಿರಾಗೇಶ್ Hari Om Sir. Apologies for the technical glitch. Um, and uh, I was uh, bemused because you said um, you could not describe uh, the state of Samadhi. <laughs> I don't know who else <laughs> can come as close. <laughs> But uh, I, don't I may know. be forgiven. <laughs> I don't know, Kaila. <laughs> Something can't be explained, cannot be explained. And the Ajnani like me, sitting to explain, it is humanly possible. <laughs> I leave it to the Mahaguru to <laughs> decipher that. <laughs> I'm only thinking that I'm adding more confusion to the mind. You are listening to uh, the blabbering of this person on Vivek Tudamit. people yes, who are really in the know how may be laughing in their mind what this person is talking nonsense i don't know <laughs> we'll not at all sir knowledge is yeah. flowing through ma saraswati and through our ma guru and uh, it will only flow right. right my apologies to all mahatmans who are all ultimately one only but in different at different period time frame appear in different bodies so my sincere apology to all the mahatmans to pardon me if i have gone wrong anywhere in trying to explain what cannot be explained correct this this was beautiful sir thank you so much for this hari om hari om